Hey everybody, thanks for watching. I am so Heidi, I'm so glad to have you here. And if you are brand new to Illustrator, this is where you should be starting. So congrats on being here. I'm really excited to get to work with you. Uh, a couple things I wanna tell you. One is that when I talk to designers who are brand new to using Illustrator, there's one thing a lot of them have in common and it's that they're panicked, they're afraid, they're nervous they're gonna break something, they're absolutely terrified of the software. So I wanna tell you one thing before we get started in Illustrator. You can't break anything. Um, it's really, there's always an op option to undo. You can always start over. You can always go backwards. Uh, you won't break the computer. You won't break the software. So don't worry that anything's gonna go wrong. Um, something that one of my great mentors taught me that I think really applies to using Illustrator is do this with the mind of a child. Um, you know, there's no right or wrong. So just forget all the worries that we have as adults and just get in there and play around and have fun. So let's get started. All right, you have Illustrator launched, I'm gonna assume that. And I am in Illustrator CC 2017. Some of the interface looks a little different. This was a pretty big update. If your interface, um, if you're in an earlier version, your interface is gonna look a little different than mine, but don't worry about it. Everything works essentially the same. So we'll start a new document by coming up to File New. And once that loads, you, there's all these sort of settings you can play with. We're not gonna play with any of those. We're just gonna create a new document. This is one of the big interfaces that looks different. So if you're in an earlier version, yours definitely looks different than mine. I'll choose Create. And what we have is what's called our artboard. So within Illustrator, we've got what is called an artboard, and that is the workspace that we design on. Now, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so you can see the rest of the workspace. Now, to zoom in and zoom out, you're just gonna come up to View, zoom in and zoom out. You'll notice there are some keyboard shortcuts here, Command Plus and Command Minus. That's on, <clears throat> that's on a Mac. If you're on a PC, it's gonna be Control Plus, Control Minus. These are two great shortcuts to know and remember because you're gonna be zooming in and zooming out of your artwork quite a bit. So I'm gonna do that on the keyboard shortcut, Command Minus. Now what we have around all of our artboard is sort of play area. I kind of call this the sandbox. And this portion of the Illustrator file will not print. If you're gonna print something, only what's on the artboard will print. If you wind up saving this as a PDF to share with somebody, only what's on the artboard will save as a PDF. So what you have in this sort of outer area sandbox is where you can um, you know, kind of put things maybe that you're working on but you're not quite ready to have it be on the artboard or you just don't want to delete it but you don't want it on your artboard. So unlike other softwares, if you've worked in Photoshop or um, even things like Microsoft Word, you're confined to the actual artboard space. Within Illustrator, you can push stuff off to the side. It will all save within your document when you save it. Um, but the main artboard is where we're gonna design today. But I just kinda wanna give you a feel of how the interface works. So Command or Control Plus to zoom back in. And while we're doing that, let's look at a couple different ways to navigate around the workspace. So the Navigator panel, which is under Window Navigator, works really well. And I'll show you how that will help you out within the interface. So Window Navigator. What that does is it'll open up this navigator panel. Now within the navigator panel, you have the option to zoom in or to zoom out, just kind of like we were doing. So it's just a different way to do it. You can also click and drag in here to kind of change where you're looking at your artboard. So if you're zoomed in really close, you can see, I can say, I wanna look at the bottom left corner. I wanna look up here. And once we start drawing, this will make a little more sense why you might wanna use this. All right, but the navigator is a great way to kind of have a visual reference of where you are within the workspace. So I'm gonna zoom back out and kind of reset this in the center. I'm gonna push my navigator panel over here. And I reference this as a panel. Um, there's all sorts of different panels within Illustrator that control different various settings. And the panels are all movable and customizable. Um, we're not gonna go too into detail about that, but you can just grab this kind of from the top bar up here and move it around. If you no longer want this open, you can always close it by hitting the X and it's still always available up under Window Navigator. So I'm gonna move this over here out of my workspace and let's take a look over here at the left-hand side. Now, the left-hand side has what's called the toolbar, and the toolbar has tons of different tools that are used for drawing and various designing in Illustrator. 
And what we have over here on the left, and yours is definitely not showing like that. Yours is gonna look like a rectangle. Uh, I had already been using the circle earlier, so mine was showing the circle. But by default, you're gonna see a rectangle over here. And next to that rectangle, kind of in the bottom right corner, you'll see a little black triangle. And you'll notice a lot of these tools have these little black triangles in the bottom right corner. What that means is that there's more tools hiding underneath that. If Illustrator were to show all of the tools the toolbar would take up half of your, your computer screen. So they've stacked certain tools accordingly. So in order to access tools that are hiding underneath other tools, you just simply hover on top of the tool. So I'm gonna hover on top of the rectangle tool and I'm just gonna click and hold. And that exposes tools that are hiding underneath it. So the ellipse tool, for example. And in this demo, we're gonna draw a basic button. So we're gonna use the ellipse tool to do that. So I'm gonna select the ellipse tool and now you'll notice my cursor has a little cross hatch on it. Now, a couple things when I'm drawing with the ellipse tool. The first thing, let's just click and drag. As I click and drag, you'll notice a few cues kind of happen. Um, and this is with smart guides turned on. By default, your smart guides should be turned on. Um, I can, I'll show you in a second how to control whether those are turned on or turned off, but you'll notice, and again, depending on what version you're in, that you might get um, a visual cue showing you a cross hatch in the middle, which is showing you that you have drawing a perfect circle, as opposed to if I draw this a little bit squatty, it's gonna be a little bit more oval. Now, you can rely on the smart guides for this. However, I do wanna show you the keyboard shortcut to ensure that you get a perfect circle. If you hold the shift key while you draw, you will get an absolutely perfect circle. It constrains the proportion as you create your circle. It does the same if you're using the rectangle tool. If you hold the shift key, it'll allow you to create a perfect square. And the trick to using this is that you wanna release your mouse and then release the shift key, okay? This will ensure you get the perfect circle. Now, once we've done that, you'll notice that it's just a really basic circle. It appears to be either white or have no fill color and just a black outline. And we can see that if we zoom in a little bit, okay? Now, the colors are controlled by the bottom down here of the with the fill color and the stroke color. So the fill color by default is set to white um, and the stroke color by default is set to black. These are all changeable and I'll show you how to do that right now. So I'm gonna come up to window, swatches. Now I wanna open my swatch panel. As I mentioned earlier, when we were in the navigator panel, um, I've got all these different panels that allow me to control my artwork within Illustrator. They are all always available under window and they're uh, sorted alphabetically. So window swatches will open up my swatch panel and this allows me to choose a variety of preset colors. You'll also notice you have your color panel open. Um, you might have it open, you might not. And if you don't, you can come up to window color. And that allows you to choose any color from the entire spectrum. So we'll just use the swatches right now. This will be a little bit easier for the demo. And I wanna change the fill color to be something other than white. Now this circle here that we just drew is currently selected and I know that because it's got what's called a bounding box around it. So I can tell that this is actively selected. So with that object selected and the fill color right here showing on the top, I'm gonna choose pink or blue or any color that you want, all right? Now if I wanna change the stroke color, I'm gonna click on the stroke to make that the active color. And what I mean by the active color is that visually that's the one that's on top, okay? So if I wanna change the stroke color and I click over here, I'm not changing the stroke color, I'm changing the fill color because that is the one that is visually stacked on top. So I'm gonna change that back to pink, I'm gonna select my stroke color and we'll change that to something contrast so we can see. So I change that to green now let's zoom in, and this is where your navigator comes in handy, right? We've got our navigator panel over here, and I can hardly see where I'm at, because um, I'm just all I'm seeing is this bright pink. So I can move this around, and now I can move it kind of to the edge of the button, and I can see that the stroke color is green. Now I probably wouldn't really want it to be green in real life, so let's change it back to black, and that looks a little bit better. Now we can zoom out, to get our button in our entire screen. 
And I wanna show you one other thing you can change within Illustrator. We're gonna change the stroke weight. So depending on how large or how small you drew your button, your stroke might look a little bit thicker in relation to the entire object. But if you do wanna change that, you're just gonna come up to a window, stroke, and my panel is right over here. I already had it loaded. And I can change the stroke weight by just clicking one of these arrows here and you can see I can make it much thicker or much smaller. So maybe around 10, nine or 10 looks good. And again, the size of your stroke weight will depend greatly on how large or how small of a button you drew. If you drew a really small button, a 10 point stroke is gonna be way too big. And if you drew a giant button, perhaps a 10 point stroke is gonna be way too small. So you're just gonna have to visually adjust this until you get the result that you want. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw some button holes. So I've still got my ellipse tool selected. I'm gonna come over and I'm just gonna kinda of come right about where a buttonhole might be and I'm just gonna click and drag. And again, I'm gonna hold the shift key to ensure that I draw a perfect circle and I'll release my mouse and then I release the shift key. Now I think the stroke weight for the buttonholes is perhaps a bit too thick. So let's come over here and another way to change this is I can just drop my cursor directly in this field and I'll just hit the arrow key to go down. Now that's gonna bump me down, I don't know, maybe two or three points, whatever size looks good to you, and that's fine. Now, I could do a couple things next. I could draw another circle, and draw three more for my four buttonholes. But instead of doing that, I'd rather use the circle I already created and make a couple copies of it. That way I know all four buttonholes are the exact same size. And before we even do that, let's change the circle so that it's a bit more accurate as to what we would actually have in real life. Now, in real life, this would actually be cut out of the button, and there are ways to do that, but I don't wanna to get too tricky right now, so for this example, we're just gonna change the fill color of that buttonhole to be white, okay? So that looks perfect, that looks more realistic for a button, and what we're going to do is we're going to copy and paste that circle. Now, the circle is still selected, it is the last object that we drew, which is always what's going to be selected by default. So with that all set right here, we're just gonna come up to edit, copy. You'll notice Command or Control C is the shortcut. And then we're gonna do edit. Now we could do edit paste, which is the kind of default um, option, edit, copy, edit, paste, something that we do in a lot of other programs as well. Now. It's going to paste that circle in the center of my computer screen, depending on where I am at that given moment. So if I move over here and I choose edit, paste, it's gonna paste it again in the center of my computer screen. Now that's not exactly what I wanted to do and I'll show you why in just a second. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up to edit, undo, and that you'll notice the keyboard shortcut is command or control Z. So I'm gonna undo that one. We'll come back over to this. Again, Command or Control Z one more time. I told you you can't break anything, you can't do it wrong, you can always undo it and go backwards. And now what I'm gonna do, I still have that button copied, excuse me, the buttonhole. I'm gonna come up to Edit, and I'm gonna choose the option to Paste in Front. Now, Paste in Front allows you to paste the object in the exact same position from where you copied it. So I'm gonna choose Paste in Front, and now it doesn't really look like anything happened, but it actually did because it pasted it directly on top of that other buttonhole. And the reason this is handy is because now with the arrow key on my keyboard, I can just nudge that buttonhole over. And again, I'm just clicking the right arrow key on my keyboard. And I know it's perfectly aligned with the one that I just drew. Another cool trick is to hold the shift key and the shift key will allow you to bump it over in larger increments. So. Next, I'm going to grab my selection tool. And the selection tool, in this example, we're only gonna work with the black arrow. So the black arrow is, is one of your selection tools and that allows you to select objects within Illustrator. So what I wanna do is instead of copying and pasting this buttonhole and moving it down and then doing it again for this buttonhole moving it down, I can copy and paste both at the same time. So I'm gonna grab my selection tool, the black arrow. I'm gonna hold the shift key I'm gonna select this other buttonhole at the same time. So holding the shift key within Illustrator allows me to select two objects or three or 10, uh, multiple objects all at once. Now, if I didn't want to have those selected with my selection tool, I can just select anywhere off the artwork and that will deselect that. 
If I wanted to select the actual button, I can select the button. If I wanted to select everything, I could hold the shift key and I can select all of those. And if I only want the two buttonholes selected, because that is actually what I want, I can then hold the shift key to take something out of the selection. So I can hold the shift key and click on the button, which will take that button out of the selection. So holding the shift key and clicking on something will either add it to the selection or take it out of the selection. So I just wanna have these two buttonholes selected. I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna choose edit copy. And then again, edit paste in front. I will nudge down with my arrow key while holding the shift key to move it in multiple increments. And I'll nudge that down until it looks like it's in a good spot aligned with my button. Now I can click anywhere off of the artwork to deselect it. I've got a basic simple four hole button and it looks great. So play around with that. Play around with just drawing some basic shapes, moving them around, selecting multiple objects and get comfortable in the workspace. Again, have a, have a mind of a child when working in Illustrator and I guarantee you, you're not gonna break anything. Nothing's gonna go wrong. I'll be here with you every step of the way to help you learn and understand. Thanks again so much for watching, you guys. I am so Heidi. If you like what I'm doing, check out my website and sign up for my email list. I send out tons of great content on Illustrator for Fashion and other musings about working in the industry. Lots of stuff you will not see here on YouTube. Tons of stuff that is exclusive to the email list. Thank you again. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.